Hello, my name is Greg Vogt, and welcome to my office here. I think you know that the space shuttle has retired from service, and you might be thinking, well, perhaps all this scientific research is over with, but I'm here to tell you that actually it's not. The International Space Station is still up in space, and it's doing lots and lots of research. And I'd like to tell you about an experiment that you and your students can become a part of. We call the experiment Plants in Space, and it's sponsored by the National Space Biomedical Research Institute. I'd like to share with you what's going to happen and how you can become involved. Plants in Space uses a very common classroom plant known as Brassica rapa. And this is something that you might actually have the seeds already in your classroom. We're going to find out how well these things grow in space, and in particular, look at the, how the roots are growing. That's, that's our idea behind the investigation, but you might wonder why. Well, plants in space, uh, they grow a little differently than they do on the ground. You know, on Earth, we have a dominant direction of gravity. It's downward, so roots grow down and stems grow up. But in microgravity on the International Space Station, well, there really is no up or down. As a result, plants do things a little differently. Now, the stems will grow towards light source that you have on there, but the roots may also grow in odd directions and even leave the medium that the roots are growing in and go right out into the air. Well, we need to find out how to make plants grow more normally in space. And part of the reason for doing that is that NASA's future direction has to do with taking astronauts and, and space vehicles much farther out in space than we've gone before past the moon to Mars or to rendezvous with an asteroid. And if you're on a mission like that, you're going to need a lot of food because it's a long-term mission. Well, one of the best ways to have food up there is to grow it. And plants are great for that. They'll, you, they can make food from the plants, but also plants, well, they'll purify the air because of photosynthesis. They take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. So that's a great way to extend the oxygen supplies for the crew. And uh, they can be used in, in water purification as well. So there's many reasons for taking plants up there, and we want to find out how well they grow. Now, to be a part of this experiment, and I've got all kinds of materials here to show you, you'll need a few things, and they're not hard to come by. And the first thing will be the seeds, which are, as I said before, are Brassica rapa, or Wisconsin fast plants. And you probably have some already. But they're very small seeds, and I'm going to pour some out on this little Petri dish right here. And uh, we're going to be growing those seeds. Now, the, the advantage of these seeds is that they are able to grow very rapidly. And from a planting of the seed to when it actually reaches the point of flowering and producing new seeds, it takes only about, oh, 30 to 45 days. So they're really ideal for classroom use. We're going to try to study their root growth. And to be able to see the roots, we need to have a, a growth medium that is transparent. So we're going to use a material. Well, we've got a couple of choices, actually. But the material that I have right here is called auger auger. It's a, well, it's called sea vegetable flakes, and you can buy this at natural food stores, or you can buy it online as well. But it's made from seaweed, and when you uh, process it properly, it makes a great medium for plant growth. And I've got some of that in this Petri dish right here. So these are just flakes right there, and what you have to do is to put the, uh, uh, get a um, hot plate, put some water in there, and dissolve these when the water is beginning to boil. It takes about four or five minutes of boiling before they dissolve. Then you simply take it and pour it into whatever you're going to use as your chamber for growing. Now our chamber for growing, well, we got a couple of choices. The ones that are being used in space in the investigation there are these little flasks here that are 30 millimeter, milliliters in size. And there's, there are a bunch of these that are already up on the space station. They were taken up on the second last space mission with the space shuttle. And they're ready to go. They have, they have growth medium in there that looks about like this when it's filled up properly. And the astronauts, when they start the investigation, will actually plant the seeds in the growth medium, and then we begin to study it. And the thing about it is it's transparent, so we'll be able to actually watch the root growth in the plants. Now, if you don't have these flasks, although you can buy them from your school science supply catalogs, you can also use clear pill bottles, and these work out really great. So either one will work fine for you. And all you do is pour the, once this is properly mixed, the auger is properly mixed, you simply pour it in there and then let it cool and it forms a jelly-like material. And by the way, you don't have to use this. You can also use clear gelatin. That works as well, but it doesn't last quite as long. So if you want to, want to make up a bunch of these and keep them for a long time, auger auger is the best way to go about this. Well, I've got several here right now, and if I wanted to plant a seed, I would just simply take either, I'd probably take a tweezers and grab one of the seeds. I'm gonna try to get one right here, and they're a little tricky to get, there we go. And I'll just simply place it on the top in the center, 
And then you can take a dull pencil and just simply push it in a little bit into the, the gel that you've made. Now that seed is ready to grow. And you, can, you probably can't see it too easily, it's kind of small. But I can see it clearly here, it's only down about two or three milliliters, millimeters rather, and it's going to start growing shortly. By tomorrow I should begin to see root growth. Now what they're going to do in space, instead of just one, these are flasks are bigger, they'll put in three along the top here, and then we'll watch them by video for five days and see how the roots develop. Now you might think, well, the roots can go any direction, and that's true. But we have a special chamber on board which has lights. Roots have, have a, a phototropic response. In other words, they respond to light just like plant stems do, except they go the other direction. The, root, the lights can drive the roots in the opposite way. So we have some, some white lights with a very strong blue wavelength that we hope will actually drive the roots down into the medium. We're going to have to see if that works or not. Now, how would you do that in your classroom? Well, here's a way to do it. I've already made this up, and I know it looks kind of weird. It's a shoebox with a holiday light string here. And I'm going I'm to plug this in here. I've got an outlet over here to show you how this goes. Plug it in there. So we've got these really bright white lights here. And I only have one shoebox set up here, but there's enough lights here to have a whole bunch of boxes set up side by side. Well, inside, you will see that I have clusters of lights here arranged, and they're held with tape and so forth. It's very simple. And when I plant my flask or plant these little pill bottles in here, I'll set them inside and then close the lid down so we isolate this from any other light, and just these lights are used. So I got them in there, and then to be able to see what's happening, I can open up the little window right down here and look inside and, and see the plant growing. So that'll work out really well for you. And you can use shoe boxes, any kind of box you want to. Have the kids design something that, that works best for you guys. All right, well, there's the basic chamber idea. And day after day, we'll be watching how these plants grow. Here's a couple that are growing in this little jar right here. And um, this is about, a, oh, I think about a six day old plant right now. We'll watch how they grow and be able to see the roots growing down inside there. You'll be able to compare your plants with the pictures that we get from the plants in space. And that's the idea behind the experiment, to, plant, to compare them. Now your students will have to ask their own questions, like what do they want to know? Like, for example, will they um, make just one root? Will they have a couple of roots? Will they have lots of small secondary roots? The students can ask questions like, will they go straight? Will they curve? And there are ways to measure that as well. All right. Well, that's one of the investi parts of the investigation, but there's many more things you can do with these plants. You can do other experiments, too, like grow them in, in an area with no light at all, and you can see that plant doesn't look too good. And I've got another plant over here that I've used a light to, and a, a small box to keep the light coming from one direction only, just to show how these plants are photo photosynthetic. I mean, they're, they're phototropic. In other words, they, they will bend towards the light. So you can see them doing that right there. Lots and lots of possibilities. But there's another one I want to show you that's kind of fun, and it requires a little special equipment, but you're liable to have this as well. If you are, have any robotic kits in your classroom to work with, the kids, this is actually the Legos uh, Mindstorm type thing. It's called Next. And I've made a device known as a, a clinostat. Now, a clinostat is simply a device that keeps a plant turning around so that it can't sense a particular direction of gravity. So I'm going to turn mine on right here and show you how this, this goes here. And I run through the program, which I set, and students can build, a, design their own clinostat. And you see, it just flipped it upside down. And it will do that every 30 seconds, according to my program, which means the plant doesn't have a chance to, under, to, to sense gravity in any one direction. So there's lots of, lots of opportunities for the investigation right here. But like our previous investigations in space, spiders in space and, and butterflies in space, every picture that we get will be available to you on our website. First thing you need to do is to go on to BioEd Online and check the, the site which has the Plants in Space investigation, register, and then you'll have access to the teacher guide and all the instructions on how to set this up. It'll be an exciting experiment, it'll be a lot of fun, and it's not a, just an experiment you can only do one time. Because we have an archive, you could do it every semester if you'd like to with, with different groups of students. Well, that's our opportunity, and uh, we hope that you will join in with us and be part of the Plants in Space investigation. Go on.